Welcome to Horror Movie Recaps. In this film, an unwilling mother and father take care of a child, who they know is not really a human, in a town they cannot escape from. This film is called Vivarium. Beware, spoilers ahead. In the opening scene, we see a mother cuckoo bird fighting another over the possession of a nest to raise their young. The baby birds that were in this nest initially are pushed out of the tree, and fall. We are then brought into a kindergarten classroom, where the school teacher, Gemma, is instructing the class to stand up tall and pretend to be like trees swaying in the wind. Gemma walks through the parking lot after class is dismissed, and begins talking with a school mother, discussing how hard it is for Gemma to find a house in the current market. Gemma then finds one of her students underneath a tree, examining the bodies of two baby birds who were knocked out of their nest. Molly asks why they were killed, and Gemma explains that cuckoos knocked them out of the nest because it needed a nest to raise its young, and that's just how nature works. After Molly walks away, the tree speaks to Gemma, asking her to move closer, but it's revealed that it was Gemma's boyfriend, Tom, on a ladder trimming the tree. He jumps down the ladder and gives Gemma a kiss, noticing the two baby birds on the ground. He proceeds to take out a trowel and buries the baby birds. After packing his gardening tools into the car, Tom and Gemma drive to a housing agency and meet with the representative, Martin. Marin begins to tell the couple about Yonder, a suburban development with cute little identical green houses, and he says they are quickly being bought up by other members of the community. Martin offers to take them to the housing community for a tour, Tom begins to decline the offer, but Gemma accepts, even though she says that it's not exactly what they're looking for. They drive over to Yonder, and we begin to see the rows of houses, all completely identical. Martin welcomes them into house number 9. They begin to tour the home, Martin offering them a welcome basket, of which Gemma and Tom decline. As they go upstairs, they take note of the baby room, already painted as if expecting a boy. Martin asks if they have any kids, Gemma replies with no, not yet. Once the couple leave the room, Martin mimics Gemma with startling accuracy, repeating her statement. Martin invites them to the backyard, and as Tom and Gemma step outside, Martin disappears. After they notice Martin's absence, Tom and Gemma begin to drive away from the house. They continue driving until they realize they can't find the exit, and they keep circling back to house number 9. Growing frustrated and anxious, Tom and Gemma go back inside the home, partaking in the welcome basket left in the fridge. They state that the fruit and champagne have no flavor. Afterwards they head off to bed, Gemma taking notice of the complete silence in yonder. In the morning, Tom takes his ladder and climbs to the roof of the home, looking out at the vast stretch of identical houses. Beginning to panic, Tom says that they should follow the sun until they escape, promising that they'll get out of there somehow. They begin to cross over lawns and fences, heading towards the direction of the sun. After traveling for a while, they come upon a house that has lights on inside. Excited to maybe see another person, they enter the house, only to discover it is the house that they were originally in, house number 9. After this frustration, Tom decides to set the house on fire in order to produce a smoke signal to outsiders, as well as to destroy the house they keep coming across. Tom and Gemma fall asleep in the street together, watching the house burn and crumble. They wake up covered in soot and the house fully intact. Gemma finds a box left on the street, opening it to reveal a baby boy. The box is labeled raise the child and you'll be released. Moving forward in time, the roof of the house is covered in white sheets to spell out the word help. We then see the child grown up, watching Tom and Gemma sleeping in their bed. Tom and Gemma both flip off the child, clearly establishing their relationship with the child. The child then appears to reenact an argument that happened between Tom and Gemma about ending up in their current situation. The child then asks to have his height measured on the doorframe. It's established that it's been 96 days since they first found the boy. After running around and mimicking a dog, the child asks Gemma if she is his mother, and when she replies no, he asks who is his real mother? To which she has no response. The child begins to scream an unearthly scream until he is fed breakfast. It's clear in this scene that the food is disgusting to Gemma and Tom, and they clear their plates into a box after eating a few bites. They then place the box outside, waiting for someone to deliver more food. They come up with the idea to wait for whoever picks up the box with a pickaxe. Tom flicks a lit cigarette onto the artificial grass ground, the grass pulls back, revealing a brown and yellow clay ground. Seeing this as an opportunity to escape, Tom and Gemma begin to dig into the ground with the pickaxe and shovel. After turning their backs for a moment, Gemma realizes the box is gone, missing their opportunity to catch a glimpse at the outsider. Fast forward to nighttime, Gemma and Tom are getting intimate, and we see through the crack in the door that the child is watching, 
Yeah, kinda creepy. They begin their routine again in the morning, getting dressed and eating breakfast, when Tom decides to go dig outside without Gemma's help, leaving her to take care of the child. Gemma is shown sitting in front of the washing machine, as the child runs in circles mimicking a dog yet again, Gemma looking very distressed by the routine she's been put into. The child turns on the TV, becoming entranced to the black and white fractal pattern that is on the screen. Meanwhile outside, Tom is still working to dig the hole, and Gemma is inside the car to get away from house number 9. Tom joins her afterwards, and they discover that the car battery is still working, allowing the radio to turn on to play music. Gemma gets out of the car and starts to dance, and Tom joins her shortly. Hearing the noise, the child observes their dancing and joins them. After accidentally tripping Tom, Tom absolutely bodies the child, and storms off back into the house. Gemma helps the child get back up, as a mother would. Gemma helps get the child into bed, explaining to the child that they can't be with him all the time. Turning off the light, the child says goodnight mother, with Gemma replying I'm not your mother. Closing the door, the child proceeds to scream and Gemma frantically asks what he wants. Instead of replying, the child quotes Tom, saying please Gemma let me do this. Gemma backs away in disgust and slams the bedroom door shut. Tom and Gemma get ready for bed, and as they're laying down, Gemma begins to get intimate with Tom, to which he replies I'm sorry and turns off the light. Beginning their morning routine again, Tom leaves the breakfast table to resume digging, and we see Gemma looking distressed, meanwhile the child is mimicking her every move. Tom continues to dig, until he hears a strange pulsing noise coming from below him. He drops his shovel and puts his ear to the ground before resuming the digging. Tom is fast asleep until he begins to hear the noise again, almost calling to him. He frantically gets out of bed and discovers the child watching the black and white pattern again. Tom shuts off the TV, but the child grabs the remote and turns it back on again. Gemma this time takes the remote and tells the child no, but the child yells back at her to turn it on again before ripping the remote from her hands and turning on the TV. When Gemma asks what she should do, Tom just shrugs and walks away. Before she leaves the room, Gemma whispers whatever, which the child picks up on and mimics. Turning back to morning, we hear the child screaming as Tom fixes his own breakfast, and Gemma quickly fixes the child's breakfast in order to quiet him. Tom, being done with this behavior, picks up the bowl and throws it at the wall, smashing it to pieces. The child proceeds to scream again while Tom picks him up, saying that he is going to lock it up. Gemma tries to argue with him, but Tom simply tells her to stay in the house. As Tom is locking the child in the car, Gemma begins to get defensive, asking him to give her the key. Tom brings Gemma back inside, pins her down, and says to not look after the child and let it starve. Tom lets her stand up and states that maybe they will be freed if the child dies, calling the child it and correcting Gemma whenever she says he. Gemma snatches the keys from Tom and runs out of house number 9. She unlocks the car door and assures the child that Tom won't hurt him, then carries him back inside the house as Tom watches sharply. As the sun sets, Tom continues his digging, appearing frenzied as he listens for the noise. Gemma watches him from the house window, telling the child that he will eventually get tired and go to sleep, and that it should get some sleep too and dream. The child then asks what a dream is, with Gemma proceeding to describe it to him. She tucks him into bed, shortly afterwards laying down next to him. The child hugs her, as if she was his mother. Tom wakes up inside the hole, then climbs up the ladder and into house number 9. He enters to see Gemma and the child walking down the stairs together, holding each other's hand. They leave to go outside as Tom eats his breakfast at the table alone. Gemma and the child are cloud gazing outside together, Gemma explains that clouds have a variety of shapes and sizes outside of yonder. When she says that some clouds look like dogs, the child and Gemma begin to bark like dogs, and Gemma appears as though she is in a haze. Cutting to nighttime, Gemma is laying in the bedroom as she begins to cry, meanwhile Tom is laying in the hole, crying as well. Gemma starts to get ready by herself, when she realizes the house is quiet. She begins to look for the child, checking all over the house. She goes outside and asks Tom where he is, to which he replies no. She yells down the street, and turns around to finally see the child, holding a red book containing diagrams and mysterious glyphic symbols. The images are similar to those on the TV, and a notable diagram shows a humanoid creature with a vocal sac, not unlike a bullfrog. Tom is still laying in the hole, appearing to get weaker. The child is watching the TV when Gemma asks him where he went off to earlier. The child replies saying he was solving a mystery, and admits to meeting someone he's never met before, but he's not allowed to say who. Gemma turns off the TV and asks the child to pretend to be her, Tom, and the person he met that day. 
When mimicking the person he met, vocal sacs extruded from his neck, which frightened Gemma terribly. Moving forward in time, the child has grown up into a young adult. Gemma serves him dinner, and replies you're welcome when he gives thanks. The boy asks if he is actually welcome, with Gemma replying I'm just being polite. The boy comments that her politeness is most likely out of fear. Tom is upstairs in the bedroom, with a chair leaned up against the door. He is heavily wheezing as he is getting ill. Tom opens the door when Gemma brings him dinner and they eat together. Tom notices that Gemma is quiet and asks what's wrong, in which she replies why did not let you kill him when he was young. Tom's answer is that it's because she is a good person. Tom's illness is even more apparent when Gemma needs to assist him with bathing and dressing. Bruises and sores can be seen down his back. Gemma is getting ready on the stairs when the boy walks past and asks you like playing this game, don't you? The boy walks outside with Gemma trailing behind him, but pretty soon she loses his trail, hearing his footsteps but never seeing him. Tom is then seen stumbling back down into the hole to continue digging when he comes upon a pair of bags that have been buried there. He unearths the bag only to discover it is a dead body that seems to be very old. He quickly climbs up the ladder to hear Gemma calling his name, as she appears to be lost in a blue mist. Tom calls out to her, but quickly loses his breath and collapses on the sidewalk. Gemma walks back to house number 9 to find Tom, carrying him back to the house to discover that the door has been locked by the boy. She pleads to him to unlock the door but to no avail. Gemma brings Tom to rest in the car, where he only grows sicker. Once it's daylight, and the boy exits the house, Gemma pleads with him to help Tom. The boy says maybe it's time that he has been released, and walks away. As the sun sets, Tom struggles to light what is left of his cigarette. Tom asks if Gemma remembers the wind outside of yonder, and how much he misses it. He begins to talk about how they first met at a bar, reminiscing on the good memories. Tom states that whenever he was with Gemma, he felt as if he was home. He dies in Gemma's arms as he succumbs to his illness. When the boy finally returns to house number 9, Gemma is lying on Tom's chest. The boy hands Gemma a box, containing a body bag just like the ones Tom discovered before in the hole. Gemma becomes distraught, but the boy continues to put Tom into the bag and drags it into the hole. Gemma can only crawl as she watches helplessly, kneeling over the hole crying. Gemma stays the night in the car, waiting for the boy to leave the house again. As the boy begins to walk away, she sneaks out of the car, pickaxe in hand. She swings at him as he falls to the pavement and makes an animal-like noise. He crawls away from her on all fours, and reveals an opening in the sidewalk that he crawls into. Gemma manages to keep it open using the pickaxe and chases after him. She slides down a hallway similar to that of house number 9, and bursts through the living room. The child is shown to be watching the TV while another woman is sobbing at the dinner table. Gemma and the woman lock eyes as Gemma sinks through the floor as if it were made of sand. She falls into the bedroom where another couple are intimate on the bed, as a boy stands in the doorway and claps. Gemma is dragged under the bed and drops into the bathroom, where she finds a man who has committed suicide in the bathtub. While hanging onto the curtains, she falls backwards down a flight of stairs, which seems to be in her own home. She exits the front door, limping down the walkway, then collapses on the concrete, screaming. The boy is back in the house, painting over the marks made on the door frame to measure his height as a child. He is shown preparing his own meal and tidying the house, finally becoming a grown adult. He is talking to Gemma as he lays her in a body bag, saying that she played her role in raising him, and now she can finally pass away. Gemma begins by saying that all she and Tom wanted was a home, the boy replies silly mother, you are home. Gemma's final words before dying are I am not your mother. Her body bag is dragged through the house, and thrown into the hole alongside Tom. The boy covers the hole back up, and fills the car's gas tank, as he begins to drive away from house number 9. He successfully drives out of yonder in minutes, and arrives back at the agency where a much older Martin sits dying in his chair, waiting for his arrival. When Martin sees the boy, he finally lays back in his chair and dies. The boy removes Martin's name tag, and puts it on his own shirt, becoming the new Martin. He then puts the old Martin into a body bag, and attaches a receipt before he rolls the body up and disposes of it in a cabinet behind him. Martin sits at the desk, as a new couple walks into the agency, beginning the life cycle again. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications, so you don't miss out on any new videos from us. Thank you for watching.